Good morning, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Jesus loves you. Once again, we have Father with us. Good morning, Father. Good morning. Good morning to you, Hilary. And uh, I wish you all a great moment with both of us today. Amen. Father, today's question is about Mass. A lot of people come for Mass, but some of them come maybe once a year. Some of them come once a week. Some of them come daily Mass. And some of them are outstanding Christians who just come to fulfill the obligations of a, of a Sunday Mass and so on and so forth. What is your advice to people? Why should people come to Mass? What do they get out of this Mass and so on? You will never appreciate anything unless you know what it really is. Amen. So that is what you need to know, Mass. Okay, we have been trained to go for Mass and we have the precept of the church, you go for Mass every Sunday, otherwise you commit a mortal sin, therefore let me go. And yeah, away. obligation. That's not done. Yeah. Yeah. Mass has to be understood properly. The power of the Mass is the power of Jesus Christ. The Mass contains the power. Where is the power of Jesus Christ? The one crucified, died, rose from the dead. That is Jesus. Jesus' power is that. Amen. And that is being reenacted on the altar every time you celebrate the Mass. Amen. So there is that great mystery. It is a sacrament. When you say sacrament, sacrament is something of an external sign. An external sign which points to something beyond, beyond the reality. So we must be able to see beyond what is seen there. You have a wafer of bread there and we say it is the body of Christ. Oh, how do I know it is the body of Christ? You begin to ask. This is a sacrament. This is a mystery. And mystery works through signs and symbols. Signs are pointing to some other reality, which is beyond. It's like in an open window. And open through an open window, you see, if it is opening to the ocean, let us say, you see and see a horizon, horizon, unlimited horizon. You see to the extent your eye can see. And after that, you know, there is something more, you know, but you don't see it. It is there. It can be also a window with blinds, closed blinds. And then you don't see anything and beyond the blinds. <laughs> you see only so much. Yeah. So, this is the difference. When you look at the, the wafer of host, as you look through a window with the blinds closed, you see only so much. If it's an open window, and what do I mean by that open window? Is the, your open heart, your faith, your trust in the Lord. There is something beyond what is seen. And that needs your faith. Amen. It is uh, nothing extraordinary. When you say faith, oh, you can say, when you cannot explain, you say it is faith. When you cannot explain, you say it is mystery. Yeah, mysteries are happening every day of our life. But there are many places or many uh, incidences where the Eucharist has turned into the uh, uh, flesh and, and preserved for centuries. Okay, we need not go for all that. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. Those are things. Okay? There is an example of Saint Louis. Yeah. Saint Louis was told that Jesus appeared in the host. Yeah. Please come. Yeah. King Louis. Huh? Yeah. He said, "I am not coming. I have seen. I see him every day." Oh. Okay, with my faith, I see him. I believe he is there. Where well, I should I go? Amen. So, uh, that, these things are not should not be playing a big role. Understand what is it? the faith has to play a big role. So I can give you an example how we have to see beyond. We always express things through our daily life and tell of something beyond that. One thing that all of you are accustomed to is the public demonstrations. Yeah? laborers coming in demonstration okay and uh, they come they march down the street yeah throw their fists into the air shouting slogans and uh, the one who is 
not a part of that demonstration. It's a disturbance, public disturbance. <laughs> you cannot reach your uh, workplace. You cannot keep the appointment with the doctor. You cannot keep anything. You are just stranded. Yeah. That's how you look at it. Yeah. They, coming down, marching down the street, they create a solidarity, a unity. They have something to say to the public beyond what you see. You see only our shouting. We, you see only what we disturb. But we have some grievance. You do not know that. We want you to know that. Beyond this shouting, there is some greater reality. I'm giving you an example of that. So this is called a sacramental reality. Shift that to the Eucharist. Jesus is telling about his love which you don't see in this host. This love will be clearly shown tomorrow. As on Monday, Thursday, Eucharist was uh, instituted. Good Friday, you will see that tomorrow. And that I'm showing in an anticipated way here. Tomorrow, I will give my body to be broken. Amen. I will give my body to be pierced. My body will be crucified, crowned with thorns, pierced with lance, all because I love you. Amen. This love I am telling you through this Eucharist. This is the love. So, so from here you need to go beyond so and see the love that I bear for you. And unless and until we realize the love that Jesus has for us, Jesus, the crucified Jesus and the risen Jesus is present there in the most holy sacrament of the Blessed Sacrament. Of mass. It is no more a wafer of bread. It is the body of Christ. Transubstantiation has taken place. The substance of the host has changed. Accidents remain. The color, the taste, the shape, everything remains. But then inside of it, what makes the bread bread? That is the substance of the bread. That has been changed. That is called the transubstantiation that is taking place. And that we need to see with the eyes of faith. That's why at the benediction of the Blessed Sacrament, we sing Tantum Ergo. Amen. In Tantum Ergo, that is a great poem written by Thomas Aquinas, where he says, Senses cannot grasp this marvel. Faith must serve to compensate. Great words. Amen. Your senses cannot grasp this grasp. marvel. This is a marvel. Absolutely. And faith, faith must come must in compensate. and compensate. Then you will see Amen. the great love of Jesus. Amen. And Amen. once you realize that this sacrament is manifesting before me, the great act of love Jesus enacted on Calvary, Calvary, then you will simply love it. Amen. And you will go for it. Amen. And you will experience the love of Jesus Christ there. That should happen. Amen. Father, different uh, areas of mass, uh, uh, like repentance and whatever, how would you give us? It's, uh, the mass is structured yeah. in a way to prepare you yeah. for the final communion. Okay. Mass ends in communion. Yes. So we have in the beginning, okay, we bless ourselves with the sign of the cross. Yeah. Begin like that. Yeah. And then we have the penitential rite. Yes, repentance. We are all sinners. Okay. We are not worthy yes. to celebrate this mass. Amen. We are not worthy to stand in the presence of God. We Amen. acknowledge Absolutely. our sinfulness. Absolutely. And then once we have cleansed our heart, we are ready to listen to God. Amen. And yes. we have the word of God Absolutely. read to us. Absolutely. Listening to the word of God prepares our heart. Purifies us. And uh, there is, uh, sometimes there is a homily. Homily yeah. is the interpretation of the readings, the word of God. Yeah. And then we offer up our prayers and petitions, the prayer of the faithful. We yeah. have our needs. We place Put our needs before, before God, yeah. who is our loving father. And then comes an important part of the Mass, that is offertory. offertory. This is the time when we offer ourselves to God. All that we are and all that we have, we offer, bring before God. The gifts that are offered 
to God is always bread and wine. You can bring other gifts, the fruit of your labor and work of human hands. We say that prayer in the offer tree. Yeah. That shows your life. You're bringing your life before the altar and offering it to God, asking him to transform these gifts, transform his, these gifts, blessing it with his life. And transform the bread into the body of Jesus Christ. Transform the wine into the blood of Jesus Christ. So a prayer of transformation. And finally, there is the time of consecration. It's called the canon of the mass. It starts with praising God, singing holy, holy. And then the real part of the consecration part of the mass comes. And then... The priest is said to be acting in the person of Christ. Acting in the person. It's not the priest who is doing this. It's the person of Christ. Priest is only representing Christ. And Amen. there he says the words of Christ. This is my, my body. Book. Take and eat. This is my blood. Take and drink. And do this in, in memory, memory of me. Amen. It does not say just remember me. Do this in memory. in memory of me. Continue to do that. That is, Mass does not end at the altar. Mass has to be continued. continued. You need to break your body and shed your blood for the sake of love, for your family, for everyone you love. Just like it has Jesus to continue. Did. That is doing in memory of Jesus. It Amen. has to continue. Amen. And then, after the consecration, we have again prayer for the church, prayer for everyone gathered here, prayer for the dead. We remember the whole church. Amen. The church is a church in this world, church in purgatory, church in heaven. All the three wow. are brought together there. Pray for the entire church. So because this is a community act. Act of the uh, church is not individual act. And therefore people should be always careful to be part of the community. Not just stand out. Not uh, just, okay. <laughs> not just uh, because of lack of space. You no, no, it's stand. not lack of space. Sometimes people just <laughs> <laughs> here it is in Dubai. It's like that. Yes, okay. okay, they don't have the space. Dubai is different. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. they do. Whatever you do, you should be part of the community. Amen. So whenever you are inside the church, when you are conveniently seated, yeah. follow the actions of liturgy. Amen. Some people keep kneeling all the time. <laughs> Some others keep standing all the time. And some do not know what to do. There's a, <laughs> so, there are certain gestures to be followed. And yes, each gesture has a meaning. And of course, when you are standing, you cannot do all these things. Yes. You can either stand or kneel. But then... And the response yeah, also yeah, should uh, be there. No respond, responding to the prayers. Yes. Saying the prayers slowly, yes. devoutly. Amen. And all these things are part of this. And then, uh, after having prayed for the entire church. Church means all the three areas of the church. Heaven, earth and the purgatory. We come to God our Father. The Our Father, the great moment when we say the prayer Jesus taught us. And that is the prayer Jesus taught us. Therefore, there is no better prayer than that. Amen. And therefore, it has to be said with the utmost love for God our Father. Call our him, Father him who Abba. art in call heaven, then your uh, heart must throb Amen. Uh, with love. Amen. And then... The prayer contains everything uh, a full prayer should contain. And then there is the peace, exchange of peace. We have met God our Father and we are His children, as children of God. We experience the peace of Christ and we exchange that peace to one another. And then comes communion. We receive the body of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We receive the body of Jesus Christ with great faith. Okay, reaching the body of Jesus Christ is something that you cannot imagine. And God has given you that gift. Gift of His body to be your food, Amen. to be your nourishment. Amen. And then your spiritual life needs that. Amen. So receive it with proper preparation and proper attitude and proper devotion. And then that 
is going to remain with you for the rest of the day. And then run, don't run away once you have received. <laughs> that should create a communion. This Amen. is called Holy Communion. Holy Communion. It's a communion of all that, all the people who have, who have gathered there. Feel oneness with them and feel for them, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ and uh, children of one, only God Family. the Father. Okay, so that has to be the attitude and then receive God's blessing. Final blessing. Final blessing has to be received. Amen. And then, then the, the priest says, go, go in peace, peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. <laughs> go and glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. So that is the end of the Mass. So this is how Mass should be understood and celebrated and accepted and participated. Amen. And it is going to be a wonderful grace. Father, there is healing also in the Mass when a lot of people get healed during Eucharist when they take the host and so on and so forth, during the lifting of the chalice and so on. Um, you know, people get healed and uh, we know also that there are lots of people who steal the host and, and sell it. Um, you know, so many things are happening, you know. What that you it only increases the value of the Eucharist. Value of the Eucharist. If somebody has to steal a wafer, yeah. it means it has uh, some value. Some value. <laughs> and this is nobody <laughs> steals. You may steal a diamond, but uh, why you steal this one? Ah, this is more precious than the diamond. That's Hallelujah. why. That's, that's <laughs> that one. And also healing. Okay, it's a gift of God. Amen. Everyone may not get healing. God wishes something, He will do it. Hallelujah. It may be in the context of Eucharist. It may be anywhere. So God heals when he wants amen and every healing is a sign of god's love amen it is not the priest who is raising the chalice healing you the priest who is celebrating the mass healing you and he should never pretend that he is the one healing the healing comes from above Hallelujah. it is god's gift and amen. nobody else can heal you amen Thank you, Father. Thank you very much for this lovely explanation on the Mass and uh, about all the different uh, areas of Mass and how we should really participate in that Mass. Brothers and sisters, may the good Lord give you the understanding to understand and participate fully in this Mass and may you participate not only once in a year, not only once a week, but daily if possible. God bless you. Father, give us your blessing, please. Thank you very much once again, Hillary, for uh, uh, questioning me <laughs> and <laughs> grilling me here all the time. Okay. <laughs> so, enjoyed your uh, presence. Enjoyed uh, the presence of all of you who are who must listening be listening to, to me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your presence. And God bless you. I impart my, the blessings of God to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance to you and give you peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God bless.